Hey, all you cool cats and kittens, it's your favorite history teacher, back at you again with another historical video. And today, on this special day, uh, we're going to talk about the war in the Pacific and, and finish towards getting towards the end of, the, of World War II. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, the war in the Pacific. Module 11, lesson six, we got one more module left. And then it's test time. So get ready. Uh, that was your warm up. Okay, we're going objectives. We're going to explain the allies and why the allies initially struggled to gain ground in the Pacific. Identify key turning points in the war in the Pacific and describe the Allied shift into an offensive approach in the Pacific War. All right, lots of words. So um, the Japanese are on a roll, people. Pearl Harbor dealt a tremendous blow to the U.S. Pacific Fleet, one that would take several months to overcome. Pearl Harbor encouraged the Japanese to continue their assault on territory in Asia which will lead them to a string of victories unimpeded by the U.S. They couldn't stop them. The first six months after Pearl Harbor, the Japanese conquered an empire that dwarfed Hitler's Third Reich. Not only did they conquer much of Southeast Asia, they went further south and east in the Pacific to take over many island outposts. These islands gave uh, the Japanese control of, over rich oil reserves, which were vital to their military plans and future operations remember that's why the u.s uh they cut off ties with the uh with the japanese and so the japanese had to go out and you know find natural resources that the u.s you know stopped trading with them that's why you know the japanese attacked pearl harbor the allies were stunned by the rapid success of the japanese that following the months after pearl harbor they underestimated the Japanese soldiers. They were well-disciplined, well-trained. Ex they had excellent equipment and weapons. Um, if you remember from the movie Pearl Harbor, the, Ben Affleck says in the fight scene, uh, remember that our planes can't outrun their planes. So, you know, they had faster planes than us. Japan's attacks on Hong Kong, Singapore, the Dutch East Indies, and Burma were part of a larger offensive strategy with one major target, the American-controlled island of the Philippines. General Douglas MacArthur was in command of the Allied forces on the islands where he led a small uh, force of Americans plus poorly trained and equipped Filipinos with uh, massing 80,000 soldiers. But they were no match for the 200,000 that invaded the island December 1941. As the Allies gained ground, MacArthur planned to retreat to the Bataan Peninsula, where he hoped to hold off the Japanese for as long as possible. The food, medicine, and supplies that uh, were there were limited when they arrived, and MacArthur will urge Allied officials to send ships to relieve his starving, battle-worn troops. Now, this is, you know, shortly after the war uh, that America enters the war. Um, no one was in the Pacific. Besides America, no one was in the Pacific. Maybe maybe a little bit of British, but no one was stopping the Japanese. War planners said it was too risky. So MacArthur's forces held out for as long as they could, but through hunger, disease, and bombardment, uh, will kill 14,000 people and wound 48,000 more. With their backs against the wall, FDR will force MacArthur to leave. He promised, I shall return. Uh, less than a month later, 10,000 American and 60,000 Filipinos surrendered. And for five days and nights, the Japanese forced the captured on, along what is called the Bataan Death March test question. Uh, think of it as like the American version of the Trail of Tears, you know, where they had to force the uh, Native Americans from the south, south, uh, east United States to Oklahoma and walk there. Not as long, but you know, they they were forced to walk. I think it, I want to say it was a hundred miles, maybe a little less. But but the on death march or baton. 
They had very little food or water, and those who dropped along the march were either beaten or killed. Those who couldn't carry on. The thousands will perish, while many hundreds more receive poor treatment in the Japanese prison camps. So that's the Japanese Empire midway of 1942. Bigger than uh, what Hitler had. Uh, this is the attack invasion of the Philippines by the Japanese. These are Japanese soldiers. This is a representation of an American soldier about to get bayoneted in the back. This is real prisoners of war. More prisoners of war. All right, turning the tide. So April 18th, 1942, Army Lieutenant James Doolittle will lead 16 bombers in a daring raid on Tokyo. This is Tokyo. T-O-K-Y-O. -O. And several other Japanese cities called Doolittle's Raid. Now, if you recall, I believe over 350 planes were used in Pearl Harbor by the Japanese. We took 16. This did not make a significant damage uh, to the city, but it had impressive effects as it raised the morale of American soldiers shortly after Pearl Harbor and it dampened the invisibility of the Japanese for a time. Uh, close on the heels of Doolittle's raid came another morale booster since the beginning of the war. Allied forces, mainly Americans and Australians, had been unsuccessful in slowing down the Japanese. The Allies, however, were successful in stopping the Japanese drive toward Australia in a five-day battle called the Battle of the Coral Sea. The fighting was all done in the air, as the airplanes will take off from aircraft carriers and go have their little uh, airplane fights called dogfights. It wasn't as a decisive win for the Allies as both sides took losses, and both sides will claim it a victory. But it was a strategic triumph that the Allies were able to stop a Japanese invasion since Pearl Harbor. The Japanese leaders were alarmed by Doodle's raid, and they were determined to stop any future attacks on the Japanese mainland. They planned to lure the Americans into a large sea battle with the goal of destroying the rest of the remaining naval forces. Remember, American uh, aircraft carriers were not um, docked in Pearl Harbor, so that was a good thing. And um, that's, that's part of the reason why, you know, we get the dub. They plan, uh, the first step in their plan was to attack Midway Island, strategically placed between Hawaii and Japan, halfway there. The Japanese had a large advantage with more ships and aircraft carriers, but the Americans had one advantage with their naval intelligence officers breaking Japanese code and knew Midway would be their next target. They also knew the date and direction which the Japanese would attack from. Admiral Chester A. Nimitz was in charge of the naval forces in the Pacific and moved to defend the island, carefully placing his forces based on where Japan would attack from. A little hide and seek, you know. June 3rd, 1942, American scout planes found the, Jap the Japanese fleet where they were in the ocean and sent torpedo planes and dive bombers to attack that area. The Japanese were caught with the planes still on the decks of their aircraft carriers, and the results were devastating. The Battle of Midway was a tremendous victory as the Japanese will lose four aircraft carriers, a cruiser, and 250 planes. The four aircraft carriers is a big, bigger deal because I believe at the time Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments if you want. But at the time of this battle of Midway, which test question, the last bullet point, last bullet point, test question, that the Japanese had seven total aircraft carriers. And then in this battle, they lost four of them. That's a big deal. Here's General uh, or Lieutenant Doolittle. Excuse me, here's um, planes launching off aircraft carriers, which hadn't been done. I mean, the Japanese did it first, but like, you know, for America, it hadn't been done. Battle of the Coral Sea. Here you have um, dogfights. Uh, this, this debris is called flak. And, you know, that stuff gets sucked up into the air, sucked up into the plane's engines. You know, the, the whirring... Uh, propellers and it'll damage the engines that way uh that's chester a nimitz and that's the battle of midway 
Here's a representation of Midway. All right, island hopping. The first step in the Allied new, new Allied strategy to win the war was taking control of the territory of the Solomon Islands. The Japanese took it over in 1942, but an American presence would help protect nearby Australia. And the island of Guadalcanal was its first stepping stone. The island had a nice airfield, but other than that, it was strategically guarded by swamps, jungles, and a daily temperatures around 90 degrees plus humidity. If you've ever been in that type of weather, it is not fun. The battle took place August 1942 when 19,000 troops stormed the island. There were small victories here and there by land, sea, and air. And after six months of fighting, the Japanese uh, just abandoned Guadalcanal. They nicknamed it the Island of Death. Maybe they are they were unsure about taking over the island or were just like, oh, America, you want this? You can have it. Uh, Guadalcanal would be Japan's first loss on land, and it wouldn't be their last. The Japanese still controlled a number of heavily fortified islands in the Pacific, and attacking those islands would have been a costly and time-consuming endeavor. Instead, uh, the Allies will uh, choose to bypass them in favor of strategically important but less well-defended islands called island hopping. Test question. Uh, this is going to be a short answer question. Describe island hopping. So, this strategy called for a powerful combination of land, air, and sea forces to capture and secure islands while avoiding the heaviest concentration of enemy forces. These captured islands would then serve as bases for future military advances could be launched. So, you know, if you skip these heavily fortified islands and you go off to these small, less defended islands, um, it's kind of a guessing game for the Japanese, um, you know, kind of like how Hitler had to guess that Calais would be where the Allies invaded, not Normandy. Well, you might think of this heavily fortified island of Borneo in, you know, Southeast Asia. And actually, Americans aren't going to invade that island, you know. So... Island by island, the Americans will win territory back from the Japanese, and the Allied forces were moving closer and closer to Japan. Here's the pictures from Guadalcanal. Kind of like a little D-Day um, invasion, landing craft, boom beach. Um, there you have Guadalcanal. Here's a map, Guadalcanal. Here's a picture of island hopping, where they would leap from. And look, Guadalcanal is right there, Solomon Islands. Go up to, uh, you know, the Philippines, Palau, Guam, Saipan, the Mariana Islands. Getting closer and closer. Okay, code talkers. So hundreds of Native Americans of the Navajo Nation uh, worked as code talkers, translating messages into coded version of their own language. The Navajo language was spoken only in the American Southwest and traditionally had no alphabet or other written symbols. This unwritten language was so complex that the Japanese never deciphered it, allowing for quick and secure transmission of vital, in vital military information. Throughout the war uh, in the Pacific, from Midway to Iwo Jima, the code talkers were considered indispensable to the war effort. Very vital. And here are pictures of the Native Americans. <laughs> All right, he's back. So Americans continued leapfrogging across the Pacific towards Japan, and in October 1944, some 178,000 Allied troops and 738 ships converged on the Leyte Island in the Philippines. Leyte, Leyte. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. MacArthur said, People of the Philippines, I have returned. So the Japanese will throw their entire fleet in the Battle of Light the Gulf. This will test out, they will test out a new strategy called kamikaze attacks, test question, which are suicide pilots crashing their bomb-laden planes into Allied ships. 424 kamikaze missions took place in this battle, sinking 16 ships and damaging another 80. I don't think they were good at their targets. Or maybe they just didn't go boom, boom a lot with their bombs. Despite the damage done by the kamikazes, the Battle of Light D Gulf was a disaster for Japan in three days of fighting. They lost three battleships, four aircraft carriers, 13 crews, and almost 500 planes. Materials 
gone to waste in the bottom of the ocean floor. These are ships that need a lot of materials to build, especially aircraft carriers. So, you know, planes, they could, you know, make those pretty quick. But like aircraft carriers, aircraft carriers are like big little cities, man, floating on the ocean. They are huge. Well, nowadays they are huge, but still a lot of materials go into making a working aircraft carrier. So the Imperial Japanese Navy will play only a minor part in the defense of Japan as we get closer and closer to the end of the war. Here's a famous picture of Douglas MacArthur crossing into the Philippines. Uh, here's the Battle of the Philippines. This is a picture of it, but this is more or less from a video game. Uh, I believe Call of Duty World at War is the picture I took it from. All right, <clears throat> last slide. So, tough battles. After retaking much of the Philippines and liberating the American prisoners of war there, the Allies will turn to Iwo Jima. It was described as an ugly, smelly glob of cold lava squatting in the surly ocean. Iwo Jima means sulfur island. So if you ever smelled sulfur before, it's not the best type of smell. The island was critical to the U.S. as a base for which heavily loaded bombers might reach Japan. Hmm. It was also one of the most heavily defended spots on Earth with 20,000 Japanese troops entrenched in tunnels and caves. More than 6,000 Marines died taking this desolate island, the greatest number of deaths in any battle in the Pacific up to that point. Only 200 Japanese survived. So now it's beginning to be more of a struggle. You have 20,000 Japanese. You're telling me almost 21,000? Almost 21,000. Barely 200 lived? Like, the closer and closer the... Uh, allies got to Japan the bigger the struggle it was so Iwo Jima pretty big uh, test question Iwo Jima uh, in April 1945 US Marines invaded Okinawa while the Japanese unleashed more than 1900 kamikaze attacks sinking 30 ships damaging 300 more killing 5000 seamen once ashore the Allies faced an even fiercer operation opposition uh then on iwo jima and by the end of the fighting june 21st 1945 more than 7600 americans died but the japanese had a higher toll 110,000 japanese died defending okinawa that's a lot if you've ever seen well we're gonna watch it the uh movie hacksaw ridge the hacksaw ridge is uh shows the Struggle for Okinawa. Uh, rather than surrender, two Japanese generals chose the ritual suicide, um, taking their own life rather than being a prisoner of war. And the Battle of Okinawa was a foretaste of what the Allies imagined what the invasion of Japan's home islands would be like. Churchill estimated it would take a million American lives and half that number of British soldiers just to invade those islands of Japan. And... I believe my uh, grandfather actually took part in this battle. He was a Navy um, tech guy um, working on uh, the boats. So I actually have pictures um, that, you know, my grandpa snuck out. You weren't supposed to take, you know, photos of anything. So he secretly brought those back. So yeah, I'll probably show the show those to you in class. Anywho, hello. All right, so this is the Battle of Iwo Jima. If you think about it, here's Tokyo. Iwo Jima's all the way out there. This is the picture, the famous picture of the Marines struggling. Uh, this picture symbolizes the struggle it took to not only place the flag there, but to also, what do you call it? The struggle of, the struggle for the island in itself. Um, you know, 20,000 soldiers died. And then here you got Okinawa. And then I believe, I looked up, you know, where Hacksaw Ridge is. I believe it's like in this area, I think. 
or maybe it's here. I don't know. You guys got Google. You can look it up. Here, them surrendering. And there we go. So, yeah, um, that concludes this lecture. Uh, I know a little bit quicker. Uh, and I know, um, you know, we're, we're getting towards the end of World War II. So, you know, the end is near. Hopefully you guys like the, the Grogu, the Grogu fit. Um, so your homework is page 554, 4 through 6. Page 5, 5, 4, questions 4, 5, and 6. And yeah, you know, hopefully you guys did enjoy that. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Leave a comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.